Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, we're going to create a color picker program using React. This serves as more of an exercise now that we know how the use state hook and the on change event handlers work. So let's get started. All right, let's begin everybody. Within our source folder, we'll create a new file for a color picker component. This will be a JSX file. We will use function based components, function, color, picker. There are no parameters. Then let's be sure to export this. Export default color picker. We need to return something. For the time being, I'm going to return a fragment just so that everything works. Going back to our app component, we will import our color picker component from its location. Dot forward slash color picker dot JSX. Then let's include one color picker component. And that is all we need with the app component. Heading to the color picker component, we will need to import the use state hook. Import from React will use object destructuring just to get the use state hook from React. Within our color picker function at the top, we'll use the use state hook to create a stateful color variable. Const we're going to use array destructuring and create a color and a setter function for that color. We will use the use state hook. For the color, if you would like to set an initial color, you can do that. I recommend using hexadecimal values to keep it simple. For example, if you would like white, that would be six Fs. Personally, I'm a fan of using HSL values for hue, saturation, and lightness, but that can get kind of complicated you would need to pass in a JavaScript object with those three properties. We'll stick with hexadecimal values just to keep it simple. Then we'll create our HTML elements. So within the return statement, I will create a div element. This div element will have a class name of color picker container. With React, when using CSS, I like to use a hyphenated naming convention. This development will contain everything we need for our color picker component. Within this development, I will create an H1 element for a heading. The heading will be color picker. After this H1 element, I will create a nested development. This nested development will have a class name equal to color dash display. This is what's going to change color, this development. Now I will set the style attribute equal to some JavaScript. If I attempt to set the background color to our color variable, well, with any CSS properties in JavaScript, we need to enclose them within an object. So we will use a double set of curly braces and that would work. If you're embedding some JavaScript and then you're changing some CSS properties, you'll need to enclose those CSS properties within a JavaScript object. Within this nested div element, we'll create a paragraph element that has text of selected color, embed some JavaScript, include our stateful color variable. After this div element, I will create a label. This label will have text of select a color. I'll create an input element, input. The type attribute is going to be color. We'll have an input element for a color. The default is black. I'll set the value equal to our stateful color variable. Then to change the color, I will set the on change event handler equal to a callback to a function. We will handle color change, but we still need to define this function. That's the last step in this component. So we will create a function to handle color change. There will be one parameter, an event. All we're going to do is use our setter function for our color. Whichever color we select, that's going to be its value either RGB, HSL, or hexadecimal. We will access this event 
target access its value. Set the color to whatever that value is. So if I set the color to be, I don't know, blue, well, that color is going to change to be blue. And that is everything we need for this component. We haven't applied any CSS yet, so it's not very impressive, although it does have functionality. So be sure to save everything. We will go to our CSS style sheet. Let's select the body of our document. I will set the font family to be Arial with a backup of sans serif. I will take our class of color picker container. This is what contains everything, this div element. Take our color picker container. I will use Flexbox because I like Flexbox. Display flex. Flex direction will be a column. Right now it's a row. And align items in the center. Much better. Let's take our H1 element. That would be this heading. We are selecting H1. Let's add some margin of 50 pixels. And increase the font size to 3 REM. Let's select our color display. That would be this element right here. That has a class of color dash display. I will set a width of 300 pixels, a height of 300 pixels. I'll use Flexbox for all the elements within. Display Flex. Justify content in the center. Then align items center. I'll add a border around this element. Border, five pixels solid. I'll use HSL for the color. Let's pick something light gray. I'll set the lightness to be 80%. Then I'll round the corners with border radius. Border radius, 25 pixels. I'll add a little bit of margin to the bottom. Margin bottom, 25 pixels. So when we select a color, it's going to change. I'm going to add a transition effect. So the transition is a little more smooth. I will set the transition property. After a quarter of a second, 0 0.25 seconds, we will ease this transition. So this animation should be more smooth. Let's select this paragraph element and style it. Take our color display class. Access the paragraph element within. For the color, I'll use HSL values. 0. 0%, then 20%. This will make the text a dark gray color, although it's kind of small, you can't really see it. I'll increase the font size to 2 REM, then text align center. Let's work on the text of the label. We're going to select our label, increase the font size to 1.5 REM. Let's set the font weight to be bold and add a little bit of margin to the bottom. Margin bottom 10 pixels. The last thing we need to do is change this input element so it's a little bigger. I will select our input element, but I don't want to select all input elements. I'll use an attribute selector. Select all input elements that have a type of color. So that'll be just this one. I will set a width of 75 pixels, a height of 50 pixels, some padding of five pixels. I'll set a border radius to round the corners of 10 pixels, then set the border to be three pixels solid. And for the color, I'll use HSL. Zero for the hue, 
zero for the saturation, 80% for the lightness. That should give us a thick gray border. All right, everybody, so that is a color picker program you can create as an exercise for React.